Hey, what's going on? And welcome to video three in our series for creating our Flutter to-do list application. Uh, in the last video, I had said that we would work on the header view, but I thought about it a little bit, and I think the best next step is to get started on working on this uh, floating action button, so that way we can start adding new tasks to our view model. So that way we have some actual data to present for the rest of the application. So what we're gonna do in this video is just get started on creating this right here. And we're also going to be looking more into consumers and we're going to kind of go over how to take in our app view model that's provided by our change notifier provider and use the information within our view model within our widgets. So uh, with that being said, let's just get right into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is hop into our app view model and let's actually start by just adding in our colors. So instead of having colors scattered all over our application, we'll have all of our application colors uh, just kind of nested and just held within our app view model. So uh, within here, let's just go ahead and add our four color levels for this application. Let's go color level one. And for this, let's set that equal to colors.gray.shade50. And let's just go ahead and copy this over a couple more times. Uh, we have color level one, two, three, and four, with four being the darkest. We'll say color level two has shade 200, color level three has shade 800, and color level four is shade 900. So basically what this does is it just keeps all of our application colors in one spot and it makes it really easy to change them, update them, or you know just kind of to access them instead of having to recreate our color in every single spot that we want to use it in every other different widget. Uh, so cool, with that being done, we can go into our views folder and start creating our floating action button uh, that's just going to replace this black square down here. So within views, let's create our new file, add, add, having a really hard time typing today, add task view.dart. And within that add task view.dart file, let's create a new stateless widget and let's just call it add task view. Great. Now, if we go back into our task page.dart, file, let's go ahead and just replace that placeholder that we created earlier, that, that is that black button or that black square. And let's just go ahead and replace that with add task view, that new widget that we had just created. Uh, we can also go ahead and make that a constant. Cool. So now if we reload it, we'll see that it just disappears because we haven't built out our add task view just yet, but that's all we need to do in our task page. We can now jump back into our add task view widget and build this out. Uh, so this is going to be the first place where we're actually going to be using our consumer. Our consumer, uh, or the consumer really is just a widget that pulls in the information uh, that we had created previously. So if you remember earlier, we had wrapped our application in a change notifier provider, and we created a notifier provider or a change notifier, uh, which is our app view model. So now what we're going to do is wrap all of the widgets that need information from this view model into a consumer. So within our add task view, uh, let's just replace this container. Let's replace this with a consumer. So the consumer is going to uh, take in a context, a value, and a child. And uh, the value is actually gonna be our uh, view model. But as you can see, it currently doesn't know what object we're referring to. So on consumer, let's just be very explicit about what, uh, what the type is. So we'll say app view model. And now you can see if we hover over value, it will actually show us app view model. And let's just replace value with view model actually. So it makes more sense as to like, know what that variable can be used for. So now we have a consumer and we actually now have access to our app views or apps view model. So the rest of the widget. So if we, uh, re within this right here, we can actually return our child widget. Uh, so, uh, within here, we'll have access to all of the information inside of our app view model that includes all of our tasks, our user, and all of our colors. Um, so, cool. Uh, we kind of just went over consumer. So let's start with actually building out our button. Uh, we're not going to build out the bottom sheet just yet. Uh, we'll build out the bottom sheet in the next video. But in this video, we will build out uh, just this view right here and then show how to pull information from the app view model. Uh, and then just get the color and the styling to match what we have in the final product. So what we're gonna wanna do here is inside of our consumer, we're gonna want to return 
a sized box. So the sized box will have a height of 60 and we'll also have a child, which is gonna be our elevated button. Now our elevated button is going to take in a couple of parameters as well. We're going to need to define on pressed and on pressed is just going to be the action that's carried out every time we press that button. Um, and we're also going to need to provide a child because if we even save this right now, um, well, we can't because we need to provide a child first, but we need to have something to display visually. So our child is going to be an icon and the icon is going to be icons.add, which gives us that plus button. We also want to give a size of 30 here and that just makes the icon a little bit bigger. So now if we save this and we reload, we'll see that our application now has this plus button on the bottom right hand corner, but we want to make sure that the color actually matches our color scheme uh, that we see here. So we're going to, we're going to want to find a way to grab the color from here uh, within our app view model. So what we're going to do is hop back into our elevated button and then within it, let's just uh, define our style for this button. And we're going to set style to elevated button and then style from just put in that comma and we're going to put in all the parameters. So if you just kind of hover over, uh, you can see all of the different, um, if, uh, what's it called, modifications we can make to our elevated button. Uh, specifically, what we're going to be updating right now is our foreground and background color, as well as the shape to give it more of a rounded corner look. So uh, for our background color, let's set it to be a darker color. And we can, again, access that color from our app's view model. So if we set the color equal to view model dot color level three, we can access that color that we had previously created here instead of having to recreate a new color and then you know have it be all over the place. So our background color will be our color level three. Our foreground color will just be the color of our icon and we'll set that equal to view model dot color level one. It's our brightest color. And then because we want to custom, if we save this right now, we'll see that the color updates, uh, but that's a little bit too squared off. We want to have more of a, of a curved border on our button. What we can do is set the shape to be a um, rounded, I think it's a rounded rectangle border. And the rounded rectangle border will take in a border radius. And we're gonna be using border radius dot circular. And we'll just provide uh, 20 as our border radius. So now if we save this and refresh, uh, this is starting to resemble something more uh, that our application actually looks like, right? So if we look at our final product, um, we're starting to see that this is slightly kind of coming together. Um, we have our floating action button right here and um, we're looking good. Uh, we're basically pulling in our, our information from the, um, we're pulling in our information from the apps view model and we're ready to get going on building out the rest of our application. Uh, so that's it for this video. In the upcoming video, what we're going to be building out is this actual bottom sheet on our application. So when you tap this, it's going to pop open this bottom sheet down here. And we're gonna go over how to create that. And then after we create it, we're going to move it off into its own little section. Uh, so that way we can recreate uh, our bottom sheet in multiple different places. Because as you can see, we're using it in multiple spots. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our bottom sheet, um, the function that we use to display this bottom sheet is reusable. And uh, that way it meets the style guidelines for our application. So. Yep, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.